the moon. Our nearest celestial neighbor is a constant companion in the sky. As you watch the moon from night to night, or even over a period of time, you've probably noticed that it goes through changes in shape. These changes are referred to as the phases of the moon and are due to the relationship between the Earth, moon, and sun. Let's look at a simplified model keeping the Earth from moving around the sun and the sun from moving within the galaxy. Only the moon will move in this system. And note, it isn't a scale. The moon is some 230,000 miles away while there's 93 million miles between us and the Sun. In our model, Earth will rotate and show where it's day and night on both Earth and the Moon. We'll track the Moon as it orbits Earth one time, which takes about a month, and see how it looks in the sky to us here on Earth. When the Moon is between the Earth and the Sun, it's not visible and is called a new Moon. We're looking at the night side of the moon from our vantage point. As the moon moves around the Earth in our model, we see only a thin sliver of it on Earth. This is called a crescent moon, and because it's growing larger, it's called a waxing crescent. As the moon continues to wax or grow larger, it reaches a point where one half of it is lit. This is called the first quarter, because the moon is in the first quarter of its orbit around Earth. Past the first quarter, and up to a full moon, the moon is considered gibbous, instead of crescent. Note that the moon in our model continues to grow larger in size. This, again, is due to the relationship and positions of the moon and sun as seen from Earth. When the moon reaches the halfway point in its orbit, we see a full moon. All of the moon's surface is visible from our viewpoint. The moon and sun are now on opposite sides of the Earth. As the sun sets in the west, the full moon will rise in the east. Now the moon will begin to get smaller in size, as we see here on Earth. This is called a waning moon, and it's also gibbous. So, as the moon gets larger, it's waxing, and as it gets smaller, it's waning. Three quarters the way around the Earth, the moon again shows one half of it lit. This is called last quarter, because the moon is in the final quarter of its orbit around Earth. The moon is still getting smaller, waning. Now past last quarter, the moon is a waning crescent. We see less and less of the moon, and the waning crescent gets smaller and smaller. Finally, we are back at the starting point of our model, back to the new moon. Two interesting events can happen at new moon and full moon. At new moon, and only at new moon, we might see an eclipse of the sun. This happens when the Sun, Moon, and Earth are in a perfect line, and the Moon blocks off some or all of the light from the Sun. It's fairly rare, because the Moon's orbit is tipped about 5 degrees when compared to the Earth-to-Sun orbital line. Most of the time, the new Moon will pass either above or below the Sun, and no solar eclipse will be seen. At full Moon, and only at full Moon, we might see an eclipse of the Moon, this happens when the Sun, Earth, and Moon are in a perfect line, and Earth blocks off some or all of the light that would illuminate the Moon. Again, because of the Moon's orbit being tipped about 5 degrees when compared to the Earth-to-Sun orbital line, the full Moon will pass either above or below the Earth's shadow, and no lunar eclipse will be seen. Take a few minutes and step outside. Take a look at our celestial neighbor. You can see for yourself how wondrous the phases of the moon truly are.